Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Pluto Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're going to be doing some work in uh, Ruby's trunk. Uh, there's a lot of little jobs to be done before we start getting on the sheet metal, and that's what we're doing now. I've done some work off camera, but uh, today the project is replacing the torsion rod springs uh, for the trunk lid with gas struts. So I've got a 10-inch gas strut here, and uh, those, those rods kind of uh, sit down a little bit, and they get in the way. And I really want to clean up uh, Ruby's trunk, so because uh, it's basically going to get upholstered just as nice as the interior. And uh, I just really want to clean it up and do a lot of these little jobs and get them out of the way. And that's, that's our project for today. Now, I, I, I have done some work off camera, so let's do a quick tour of that, what I've got done, and then we'll jump right in and figure out how to get these gas struts on those hinges. Okay, one of the first things I did was repair the package tray right here. Now you see the work, it's a little shinier there. Uh, somebody, like a lot of these cars, uh, you know, wanted to put speakers back here, but you, you know, the, the glass is right here, you can't cut it very easily, so they just kind of, uh, I don't know, took a hatchet to it or something and just curled all that sheet metal back. I'll see if I can find a, a picture of it the, before I repaired it. So what I had to do was try to reconstruct all that. I considered cutting it out, put a patch panel in there, but I was able to bend all that back, get it welded up, get it pretty hammered flat, and then make that repair. Uh, same thing on this side. I mean, they're not perfect, perfect, but uh, you know, it's not gonna be seen, uh, but it, it doesn't look bad from the top or the bottom. I also, uh, this piece right here is separate from this piece. You can see they're spot welded together, and at the factory, there's a gap right here. And that kind of makes this weaker right here. So what I did was I made up a, a piece and I spot welded the two together. Um, this one was so far out of alignment, I actually had to cut the sheet metal and hammer and get that straightened out so it all lines up perfectly because the filler panel uh, spot welds right on here. So I want those, that line to be really nice and strong. So it came out really nice. I got both sides done and cleaned up a little bit. We still have that hole to fix right there. That'll be, that'll be on an upcoming video. But uh, so we got that all nice and straightened out. And then I went ahead and got started in the, the floor pan of the trunk. So uh, let's take a look at that. Okay guys, uh, I want Ruby's uh, floor pan in her trunk to be perfectly flat. I don't want any uh, things sticking up or anything like that. I want it flat. So to do that, I had to remove some stuff that was stamped in at the factory, and I'll show you right here. Uh, so there's a hump uh, where the spare tire would sit. You know, you know the drill. You'd throw a rod through there and tighten down a wing nut and hold it down and some spots for jacks and stuff like that. So I didn't want any of that in there. So what I did was I uh, went to the donor car with a Sawzall and I cut the floor pan out right there on the driver's side and I transplanted it over here on this side. So uh, it uh, took a little bit of work. It was rusty. I had to uh, clean it up. I got some muriatic acid out, and then I you know, wire wheeled it, and then I uh, treated it with phosphoric acid. So it's, it's as good as uh, you know, the rest of the pan here and the rest of the sheet metal. So uh, it was not super easy to do, but it wasn't impossible to do. Unfortunately, you see the two channels right here. Well, they're spaced differently because the seam's right there. So um, I actually had to, the ones in the car, uh, in the floor pan on this side, did not match that side. Why they stamped them at different sizes, I have no idea. So what I did was ma I made a little, uh, little buck and I redid that so it kind of jogs over. Came out pretty nice. Uh, nobody's ever gonna see it, but uh, you know, it still came out pretty nice. And then uh, I actually TIG welded this, guys. I TIG welded it all the way in. I got my TIG welder back from Dave, did a lot of practicing. He's pretty much done uh, with the chop on his Model A. So uh, I, got a, I got a lot of good practice in there. I blew three or four holes in it. Uh, you know, I'm still not that good. Uh, but I had to uh, get the MIG welder out to fix those. I can fix holes in 20 gauge easily with the MIG welder because uh, I've done it so much. But uh, yeah, I TIG welded all that, ground up pretty nice, and uh, yeah, came out pretty good. So I'm pretty happy about that, getting some skills. Um, and uh, it's not too embarrassing when, you, when I'm all done. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I wanna throw a, uh, a moving blanket in here because uh, you know, it's still bare steel. So I don't want uh, you know, my sweaty arm or something hitting the sheet metal and causing it to rust. So first step we have to do is get that hinge out of the way. 
Okay, there's a rivet right there that holds. That's what the hinge pivots on. The piece you see inside here is what the torsion spring actually connects to. Once we get the hinge out, we're going to go ahead and drill that rivet out as well. This will be replaced with a bolt. That's kind of an odd size. I think we're going to drill it out and use a 3 8 bolt in its place. So let's drill that out real quick and then punch that out. Okay, so there it is, and this is the part that actually grabs a torsion rod. We're going to go ahead and drill that over, uh, over at the bench, get that drilled out, and then we'll uh, talk about the uh, gas strut we need to put in here. Okay, we got that hole drilled out real nice, so it's 5 16 standard uh, size. The one issue uh, I had right off the bat when I got these struts was uh, they have 10 inch holes on them. So they come with metric uh, ends on them, and these have eyelets. You can get them with the ball socket and all that, but I wanted eyelets for uh, this job. I went and picked up these off Amazon, uh, and they have a ton of uh, different weights. It said, this is a 90 pounder. I can also get an 80 pounder. And it was for two of them, I think it was like $12, $13. So uh, super cheap. So if I have to keep messing around, figure out what weight I need, uh, it's not gonna cost me a ton of money. But, for, uh, but all of the ones on there all have the same 10 millimeter eyelets on the end. And that was kind of the, the sticking point of the whole thing. They didn't have standard eyelet ends. So uh, what I did for that is I went and got a piece of just standard galvanized pipe. This is eighth inch pipe. Uh, it's not always easy to find. They don't have it at Home Depot and uh, Lowe's, but they did have it at Ace. And uh, I took it over to Dave's and turned it down a little bit, but ultimately I ended up just sticking it in the drill and just run, turn on, just run on a file over it till it got down to the size I needed. And uh, so now it slides right in. So we're gonna use that as a bushing in between here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this down so it'll fit inside there. And then the bolt will go through it. I drilled out the center to 5 16 So now we have a nice bushing. So all we have to do is cut this to length so it fits down inside there and we're pretty much good to go there. Okay, so here it is. I got it, uh, I got the little dent over here, you can see it just poking up a little bit and that gives it the clearance it needs so that can swing through there and not, you know, rub. And then uh, got the bushing cut down, fits in there nice. I got to go find a 5 16 bolts a little shorter. But to keep this from wandering back and forth, I just got some uh, irrigation tubing right here. I'm going to chop it and stick it in there for now. I'll find something better later to act as a spacer so this stays you know, dead center the whole time because I want it pushing dead center, not off to one side or the other. I could have slid this over and used one of the slots to let it pivot through, but uh, I'd rather just have it push right dead center. That way I know it's not twisting the hinge one way or the other. I'm going to chop this up and then we'll jump in the car real quick and we're going to start figuring out uh, what brackets we need uh, to attach the other end. Okay, so we've got the hinge back in. I've got a bolt, a 5 16 bolt. It's a little sloppy. Uh, we're going to drill all that out and put a, a 3 8 in there so it's a little tighter, but uh, it'll serve our purpose for right now. So the critical part of this is uh, figuring out uh, your throw. So you want it so that it has enough leverage uh, when it's all the way up like that and then partially through. So you don't want to mount the gas strut in such a way so it doesn't have its maximum leverage where you want it. So right there, it's about at a 90 degree angle. And so it can push and get that thing up. Now the weight is probably the most right there about uh, half open. So there's the most amount of weight on that thing. So what I wanted to do was figure out a way to uh, hold this gas cylinder in such a way so I can calculate that and figure out if it's pushing properly. So what I did was, I just took a piece of square tubing, I drilled a hole in it, and then I uh, clamped it on here and then put a bolt through and through the end there. And then that allowed me to test, you know, each different position. So what I did was I just kind of mocked that up and then put some tacks on it. And that way I could test a few different areas, just grind the tacks loose and then, uh, you know, keep checking. So that got me to a point where I knew where I wanted this gas cylinder as far as angle. Uh, because it's kind of critical. If I went straight back like this, then the leverage would have been different at different spots, and then it would have actually lost most of its leverage at the end. So I chose a spot about like that. So let me grab the parts I made up, the uh, cardboard. I've got some cardboard templates that should get us pretty close, and I got a few other things to work on too. So let me grab those, and we'll hold them up there and see how they look. 
Okay, so I went through quite a few uh, variations of what I wanted. This is just uh, uh, just thin cardboard. And uh, to help me so I don't end up cutting a bunch of steel and trial and fit steel. So I came up with a design, and this isn't the final one, that would fit up underneath this little recess right here so I could push it up so it would be nice and clean, and then we'd have the correct angle. Well, ultimately this one's too short, but I have the final one over on the bench. We're gonna go take a look at it. Okay, I got a piece of uh, 12 gauge uh, hot rolled. I wish it was cold rolled because uh, I gotta get the scale off here sooner or later before I'm done. But uh, that's all I've got 12 gauge lying around. I wouldn't go any lighter than 12 gauge. Uh, you could go thicker, but I think that's overkill. Now remember that gas strut is pushing straight in line with our brackets. So they're only taking a straight load this way, nothing side to side. So. Uh, I think this will be just fine. Now, here's my final incarnation of what it is, uh, this, the shape. Now, it's basically the same as this one, but longer, so it fits all the way up in there. So all I gotta do is lay it out on here, cut it out, get the hole drilled, and we can start fitting up. So let me bust that out off camera real quick, and then uh, we'll start testing it a little bit, sticking a bolt in there, and then we can start working on the piece for the back side of it. Uh, we really need to get this one in first so we can figure out what the back one's gonna be. Okay, I got the piece all cut out. It's uh, ready to go. I try to get most of that mill scale off. Man, that stuff's hard to get off. But uh, what I have is the hinge uh, slid up all the way and I've got a clamp slid up underneath it. It's not clamping it, but it's holding it up about just shy of an eighth inch from being max uh, all the way up. And uh, why we wanna do that is because we wanna let this gas cylinder tell us where this piece needs to go. So I've got a, a 5 16 bolt and a bushing here. And we're going to slide this in and then we can bring this up and it's going to tell us where it wants to be. So if I remember correctly, the angle was right through that slot right there. So we can put a clamp on there. Now I don't think a clamp, the, uh, even if I clamp it with two clamps, it's going to be strong enough if I try to test this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this off and run it through the range of motion and make sure everything clears on the backside. I'll look on the backside, make sure everything looks good. And then uh, if we're pretty sure about this position, uh, we can leave this clamped right here and then we can start working on the back uh, bracket. We need to put one back there so this bolt will go through two and it'll trap it. And uh, otherwise this would just flex out. Uh, you know, without another one behind it. So let me uh, uh, stick my head around here and take a look. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. So uh, we can actually probably get started on that back piece right away. Okay, I got the piece made up. So uh, let me get a bolt in here and my spacer that'll hold this at 90 and then we'll see if we have to make any other adjustments. Get this tightened on here so they're perfectly parallel to each other. It just has to be snug, just like that. So now the, this piece and this piece are parallel, so when, that, um, when this gas strut pushes on it, it's uh, perfectly aligned. So now I can see, you guys can tell, this is not touching over here. So we need to make a jog bend to get this over so it sits flush and <clears throat> it's not parallel across the bottom here. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll get the jog bend put in so this sits at this plane and then it moves over to touch that and then if we have to put a little twist in it that's what we'll do to get this laying perfectly flat on here so when we weld it it's, uh, it's right up against this sheet metal right here. So let me, uh, let me uh, figure out where my bends need to be, and then, uh, then we'll get it bent up over on the bench, uh, on the work table, and then we'll bring it back and test fit it. Okay guys, uh, two or three more times in and out of the trunk, and it's laying in there just right. So we can see we've got it parallel, and it's right up against the sheet metal, so we're just about ready to tack this thing in and test. Now I do want to uh, weld that nut on the back side there. That way when I need to change it out or whatever, all I have to do is uh, jump in the trunk and loosen that bolt, slide it out, uh, leave the you know, pull the bushing and everything out and put it back in and we're done without trying to reach back there with a uh, wrench. So 
Uh, let me get that nut tacked on there and then uh, we'll be just about ready to uh, get this tacked in place and get the struts in and uh, test this thing out. Alright, looks pretty good right there. Alright, get the spacer out of here. Get the strut back in place. Okay, pull the clamp loose. Okay, so these are really small tacks, so I don't want to stress them too much, but let's go ahead and see if it works. There we go. Right, it's looking good. And it doesn't shoot up, uh, the, you know, it slows it down with the oil inside. Let's, uh, let me finish the other side and then we can put the trunk lid on and we can test this out to see how it works. If these 90 pounders are too much, not enough or whatever. Okay, I got the trunk lid on. Uh, basically, I just uh, kind of got it propped up, crawled underneath, put the bolts in, working by myself. So. Let's test it out, see if these uh, 90 pounders are enough. Well, it's not feeling good. Nope. Dang it. Well, that's disappointing. But fortunately, like I mentioned earlier, I can order heavier ones the exact same dimension. So uh, let me go do that right now, and I'll bring you back once they come in. And we'll get them in there and test those out. Okay, guys, I went ahead and picked up uh, two 118-pound gas struts. Uh, there were 90s in here before, and I put them on. It didn't work. It didn't hold it up. It didn't help. It didn't assist. So I said, okay, uh, let's go bigger. And so I made a big jump to 150-pound gas struts. That's what this is. These actually happen to be off a of Porsche 911. Um, actually, it's a nice beefy one. It's got a nice aluminum head on it. I like it. So I put them on and it worked. It, uh, it wasn't a lot of assist lifting the trunk lid, but uh, it holds it in the up position really nicely. The problem is it takes about a pound of force to pull it down, which is not good. A little gust of wind and it would slam. So uh, I, I'm, I, I started thinking, well, I gotta go heavier, but it's like chasing a rainbow. As soon as I get close, it seems like it gets away from me. So I, I took a pause and I thought, okay, I need to think about this. What's going on? I don't want to keep putting bigger gas struts in here because, you know, there's sheet metal. I mean, I, I don't want to overstress all the mechanics in here. I got to be smarter than that. So I slept on it and I realized, Mark, you're a knucklehead. Uh, it's not a gas strut pressure problem. It's a fulcrum problem. So let's move over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is where it attaches to the car, and here's where I was attaching the gas strut, just like that. And uh, so that distance is two and a half inches. So that is the fulcrum point right there, and you can imagine uh, from this point to the end of the trunk is you know over three and a half feet or three feet. So there's a lever on here that's pushing you know uh, three feet or more. And so this point right here, that produces a tremendous amount of force with that trunk coming down. So by extending this point where the fulcrum is, that gives us, uh, it gives less leverage to this point or less leverage onto the uh, gas strut. So if we kept extending this out, it would get weaker and weaker, you know, the amount of force it could produce for the same amount of trunk weight. So uh, what I did was I made this piece up right here and all it is is a piece of one by two uh, square tubing. I just cut, I cut a notch in it right here, uh, just rounded it so it would clear and I cut that out so I can get the gas strut inside there. And I put this in here and it just basically, it flips like this but it bottoms out up against this so it gives me a nice straight plane to uh, calculate from. And I drilled a hole out here. I put this all back together and I put a sweep on here to know exactly where to put that so this strut will fit with the mounts we already built. Kind of doing this backwards, but I've already kind of committed to those mounts, so I want to you know, kind of adjust this to make those fit. And so what we did was we added an inch and a half in length right here. So now we're going from two and a half to four inches and that's uh, basically increasing or decreasing the strength of the fulcrum by a third. 
And I think that's gonna really bring us right where we need to be. So all that's left to do is I plan on making uh, four pieces, one for, uh, one for each side on each hinge, and it'll just come out like this. And uh, we'll just weld it right here on both sides, and that'll be it. And then the hole will be right there, and we can hook the gas strut up, and I think we're going to be gold. So all I got to do is make a template. And since I got to make four pieces, I think I will go ahead and make the template out of paper and then uh, transfer that over to Fusion 360 and just use the, uh, the CNC plasma cutter to just make it quick and easy. So let me bust that out real quick, and then we'll get these tacked on, and we'll run another test. Fingers crossed. I got this figured out this time. Okay, got them all cut out. Uh, had to use an uh, eighth inch. I did not have the same thickness. This is slightly thicker than this, not too much, but just a little bit. So it fits on there really good. I did not put the holes in it for a reason because, uh, you know, getting it lined up this way and that way. So what I want to do is figure out where it goes and then uh, tack it on here because I don't want to do any final welding until we know this is going to work, but I want to tack it on here good. Then I'll flip the part over and I'll use these holes right here to draw, uh, guide the drill bit and then go right through and drill through that part. And then once I get that one drilled, then I can weld the one on the other side and then run the drill bit all the way through and there'll be perfectly par parallel, perfectly lined up. So let me get these tacked on, drilled, and we'll get this one on, I'll get the other one on, and then we can uh, get these uh, gas struts on and see if this is actually gonna work. Okay guys, we've got everything installed. We've got, uh, Got those little parts tacked on there, the holes drilled, so we're good to go. And I actually tested it with the 150 pound gas struts and it, uh, it kind of worked. It, it worked, but I ran out of stroke. Uh, since we changed the fulcrum point, now that shock sweeps in there longer than I had originally planned. So once again, I had to upgrade to a different gas strut. I think this is my fourth set, lucky they're cheap. And uh, so that's where we're at now. So let me climb in uh, real quick and I'll show you uh, plan C or D or I, I forgot, I forget what version we're on, but let me jump in there and I'll show you where we're at. Okay, so here we are and uh, we had uh, parts tacked on here and down there before. Had to cut those loose. I was able to reuse the back piece. Luckily, I just turned it and now uh, it pushes straight on it. And the reason we had to do that is I could not find a 10 inch long, uh, gas strut that had enough stroke. Uh, we were about a half inch short of having enough stroke, I think, and it would bottom out before the trunk lid was closed all the way. So I remade this piece right here. It was, it's basically identical to the one that was on here. It's just longer. And then I bent it uh, right here along that plane, right along this bend here. It wraps around here and I can weld it up inside there, uh, give it a little more strength. But uh, yeah, we ran out of stroke. So that's a 13.17 inch long strut and it has plenty of stroke. Uh, all we have to do now is tack these in place on both sides and that's the thing. You don't know if this is gonna work until you get everything built and tacked up. I've got a few of those laying around uh, prototypes even though I try to you know, template them in paper and everything else, you don't know if it's gonna work until you actually tack it in place and give it a shot. So. Uh, that's where we're at again. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked up and then we'll uh, cross our fingers and hope this is the right iteration on this to uh, get this gas struts on this trunk lid. Okay guys, hopefully this is the last uh, test and it's going to work out good. Uh, we got them tacked in there, just a, two tacks on each bracket so it's not super strong so I don't want to mess with it too much. But uh, I got a good feeling about this. So let's go ahead and pull it down. It uh, takes a little bit of force to push it down. Not bad. It's a little more than I wanted. Probably could be uh, probably five pounds less. And I do want it to pop up by itself. Uh, I'm going to put uh, an alarm system on here with trunk release and all that kind of stuff. So I would like to be able to walk up to the car, hit the button, and uh, you know, if I've got lawn chairs or ice chest or something in my hand at a car show, just hit the button, have the thing pop open and, uh, and put it in there without having to set it down. So that's working out pretty good. These struts are off a 1982, 1983 Lincoln Mark VI, I believe. Uh, they're 165 pounds each. 
Now, I, par I would probably do a lot better with a 158 or a 160, but I think these are probably going to get a little weaker over time. I mean, it's not super hard to pull down, but uh, it's kind of think about a hatchback on a, a SUV or something. You got to get a little pull. So that's about as close as I can get and still find a production model type gas strut. Go into custom struts, a lot more expensive and a lot harder to find once these go out. As long as I can find uh, you know, these struts for our Lincoln Mark VI for 8283 at auto, auto parts store anywhere, then I'll be good or Amazon or online. So it looks like it's gonna work. We've got some final touches to do before I do any final welding. Uh, and I'll show you guys uh, some of the plans on how to make sure these are serviceable. So let me uh, do a little cleanup. We'll get the camera in close and we'll talk about what we need to do there and then we can start finishing this job up finally. Okay, a friend of mine just stopped by. He needed some help on a pond pump he was uh, rebuilding. Couldn't get the bearings and uh, had some uh, threads that were kind of screwed up. So I helped him out a little bit. So. Uh, while he was here, I had him raise and lower the uh, trunk lid while I watched from the inside, looking for anything that was flexing or trying to bind or anything, and it all looked good. Even with just two tacks on that thing, nothing was really moving. So once we get it final welded, we shouldn't have any uh, stress problems or cracking or anything else. So I think, uh, I think we've got a good uh, setup here. Now, uh, this pin right here is just a bolt right now, and we need to switch that over to a pin uh, I've got a clevis pin here, and that's going to go in from this side because this arm gets really close to that brace right there. So we have to be able to put it in through this side. Now, uh, if you look, there's already a factory hole right there, and you can kind of see the end of the bolt if you look. The problem is that doesn't line up perfectly with that, so what we're going to do is uh, drill that hole out a little bit bigger with a hole saw, and then uh, so I can slide the clevis pin through there and then just put a clip on the other side. That way it's easily serviceable. And one of the other things we need to figure out is the spacing. Now, uh, it's about in the center right here, but I think it needs to be offset just a little bit on each side so the cylinder doesn't rub on that brace down there. But that's pretty simple. Just uh, some nylon uh, 3 8 ID tubing or uh, plastic, hard plastic cut it to length, put it in there, and we should be gold. But I want to work on getting this in right now. We have to tear everything apart so I can get a hole saw in there. But, uh, and I want to get all that done before I start welding so I get everything out of the way. But uh, let me get to that, and I'll bring you back when we are basically done with this project, and we'll take one final review of it. Okay, we got the oval hole cut right here. All I did on that was take a piece of uh, one by eighth Drilled a hole in it with the hole saw hole drill bit. Then I reversed the drill bit inside the hole saw so it wouldn't drill anymore and wobble out the hole. And what I did, I just clamped it up, up against the edge uh, and then uh, just kind of cut uh, part of a crescent shape out and then did a little filing, cleaned it up, and you can just see the pin. So if you uh, removed the back bolt back here and lowered it down just a little bit, you can get that pin out. So. It's, uh, it's the clevis pin is going to work out perfectly. I've already cut it to length. Got a, a little piece of welding rod holding it in right now instead of a uh, cotter pin, but uh, that's going to work out beautifully. Up here, there was a hole. Uh, there was a tab that was bent down that held, held one of the torsion rods. I went ahead and cut those tabs off and cut a piece and welded it in right there. Add a little extra strength and also just smooth that out. This will be visible and it'll probably get covered with something, so I didn't want to have some obstruction sticking out. These other holes don't matter. They'll get covered, so it's not a big deal. Uh, I finished up on my welding. I just have to do a little, little bit of grinding, just knock the tops off the weld. It's uh, no big deal. And I got it welded back there, too. So it's, it's on there solid. Uh, everything's working out just like, uh, just like I had hoped. It just took longer than I thought and a lot more uh, trial and error than I thought it was going to be. And if you guys look right up in there, you see I cut a piece and added that piece in there. There was some cracks up in there from stress. And uh, so I, get, I added that piece in there. The welds don't look all that pretty. I was up in there, but I've smoothed them out. So it's, uh, you're not gonna cut your hand on them or anything, but that strengthened it up quite a bit too. So this uh, piece that goes underneath the filler panel is nice and strong now. So let's, uh, let's climb out of this trunk for the last time, uh, at least for this project and uh, test it out and wrap this one up. Okay, let's try this out. 
Now it does feel a lot smoother now that uh, everything's welded up and uh, everything's bolted together just right like it's supposed to be. And uh, it's working out just like I hoped it would. Now I had a little trepidation about how strong those struts were at 165 pounds each. But uh, you know, the more I use it, uh, uh, test it out, the, actually it's getting a lot smoother. And this trunk lid will get heavier. It's gonna get several coats of epoxy. It's gonna get paint, emblems, moldings, latches. It's gonna get heavier. So I'd rather have those struts be a little too strong than not strong enough. Now these struts happen to be off of 1982, 1983 Lincoln Mark VI. I will put a link in the description to the part number and what vehicle it comes off of. So uh, these can be found at any auto parts store now because uh, they're coming off an actual production car. Not a, not, not a lot of years, so, but uh, these are the ones that are working out for me and I'm happy to have them and be able to pick a, uh, you know, a setup if I need them if these go bad. But uh, it's gonna work out really well and I don't know if I mentioned it, but I plan on putting the battery back up in behind the seat there, uh, you know, right inside the trunk. And with those torsion rods in the way, I would have had to try to fish that battery up underneath and over the top of them. And, uh, you know, batteries aren't light. So this is going to make it a lot nicer to get that battery box up in there. And then even when we go to uh, upholster and take care of the interior of the trunk, it's going to come out a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. So I'm really happy with the way this came out. Uh, took four uh, sets of gas struts to get where we're at, you know, so uh, learn from what I just did and, uh, you know, shoot right up to a little higher one, move the fulcrum point like I did, and uh, you should work out just fine. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. We'll see you on the next one.